tarafından tertiplenen Afet İletişim Forumu'nun ikinci ve son günündeyiz. Hepiniz hoş geldiniz, şeref verdiniz bir kez daha. Thank you, Goktu, and welcome back, everybody, of course, to the second and final day of Stratcom 2023 Disaster Communications. I'm Andrea Sankey. Um, now, we remember yesterday we heard from such really fascinating variety of speakers and panelists, and today will be no different. Uh, we'll get started with that in just a minute, but first... Yes, e, evet, ilk olarak e, dünü şöyle bir kısa özetleyelim e, değerli konuklar. Dün Cumhurbaşkanlığı İletişim Başkanı, Profesör Doktor Sayın Fahrettin Altun'un açış konuşmalarıyla başladı forumumuz. Ardından birbirinden değerli isimlerin katıldığı 6 Şubat Kahramanmaraş Merkezi, iki depremin aslında baz alındığı ve e, afetlerin, doğal olayların burada ön plana çıktığı paneller, oturumlar gerçekleştirdik. Bugün yine birbirinden değerli isimleri ağırlamaya devam edeceğiz. İlk panelimizde Sayın Büyükelçileri ağırlayacağız. Şunu da belirtmekte özellikle fayda var. Asrın felaketi diye nitelendirdik. Biz 6 Şubat Kahramanmaraş merkezi depremleri uluslararası bir dayanışma sergilendi. Tüm dünya tarafından Türkiye'ye gösterildi. Bir kez daha minnettarız, teşekkür ediyoruz. Herkes için alkış alalım o zaman. Aramızda da yine uluslararası misyon temsilcileri var. O dayanışmanın anlatıldığı, mesajların verildiği bir videomuz var. Onu isterseniz buyurun birlikte izleyelim. Türkiye. I, I would like to express my great sorrow for the devastation that has happened to you in Turkey. My heart is with you all of the time. My prayers are for you all the time. Sending you a lot, a lot of love. Senin leis Turkiye. In this sad day, I'm with you, Turkiye, with all my heart. This tragedy is testing all of us, but we will get through this with international help. Bu depremde hayatını yitiren bütün vatandaşlarımıza Allah Teala'dan rahmet dileyelim. What happened in Turkey could have happened anywhere else. It could have been your home, it could have been my home. It could have been your family, it could have been my family. So please pray for Turkey and its people. Senin leis Turkey. It's really important. Now it's not about being a supporter. It's about being human. Turkey will rise. I think it is the responsibility of each one of us living anywhere in the globe to reach out and help the people who are suffering and who need help right now. It's so awful. We must all do whatever we can to help the people who have been injured. And I want you to know that you are not alone. I know, I know you. You are strong people. I know that you will get over it. I pray for you, Turkey. I pray for you to heal those of you who have lost your loved ones. You are facing one of the biggest natural disasters of our times, but you are not alone. Senin Leis Türkiye. I've said this before, but there's often a very ironic beauty in times of tragedy. You know, when devastating events bring together people, and among the devastation, you actually see the best of humanity, and I think that's what we saw in that video there and around the world after the tragic events of February 6th. So, to discuss exactly that, actually, uh, in our first panel entitled International Solidarity and Disaster Response, we stand with you, Turkey. I'd like to welcome to the stage our moderator, Turkish Ambassador Hake Emre Yunt, and panelists, the ambassadors of Japan, Hungary, Greece, and the United Arab Emirates. Evet, Senin Neyiz Türkiye Afetlerde Uluslararası Dayanışma paneliyle güne başlıyoruz. Değerli Büyükelçilerimizi ağırlayacağız. Bir kez daha hoş geldiniz değerli Büyükelçilerim. Welcome. Japonya Büyükelçisi Sayın Kazuhiro Suzuki, Macaristan Büyükelçisi Sayın Vitor Matis, Yunanistan Büyükelçisi Sayın Christodoulos Lazaris ve Birleşik Arap Emirlikleri Büyükelçisi Sayın Said Tani Harep El Dahari olacak. Bu oturumu yönetecek yine değerli büyük heyecimiz Hakkı Emre Yunt olacak. Ben sözü Sayın Yunt'a devrediyorum. Buyursunlar lütfen. Good morning ladies and gentlemen. 
Thank you very much for being here today. Uh, approximately three months ago, we woke up with a very bad news. Uh, and 11 cities were very badly affected in Turkey uh, from this highly uh, strong uh, and uh, uh, earthquake and we faced a very big disaster maybe unseen before in the world but we knew that we had friends uh, in the international community and we just immediately called them for help and we received a very very big response in a very short time from our friends all over the world approximately 120 countries helped Turkey in one way or another. 91 countries sent uh, um, search and rescue teams in a very short time. We accommodated about 12,400 search and rescue team members and also health professionals from all, uh, all over the world in maybe two or three days, everybody arrived in Turkey. We faced difficulties in the beginning because we, uh, the first day especially, we had a very bad weather in the area, but uh, we, the, Turkey is a strong country and with the help of our friends, some of them are represented here, uh, we managed to uh, overcome this big uh, disaster in a very short time. Of course, it will still take time for us to fully re recover, but uh, we are in, on the right track. So we gathered here in this panel uh, to thank a very few of our friends who helped us. When we talk, uh, thought about, uh, I mean, uh, inviting certain ambassadors who helped us in the first, uh, I mean, the beginning in the first, uh, uh, very quickly in the, on the first day, we couldn't find, I mean, we couldn't make a selection because everybody responded in a very short time. But we thought about very, some very good friends, like our, uh, of course, they are already being introduced to you, but let me introduce them again and thank them one by one. Uh, Ambassador Kazuhiro Suzuki, Ambassador of Japan. <laughs> Ambassador Victor Matisse, Ambassador of Hungary. <laughs> Ambassador Christodoulos Lazaris, Ambassador of Greece. Ambassador Said Tani Harib Al Dahari, Ambassador of United Arab Emirates. Well, if I start to talk about and count uh, what kind of help all these friends, all these ambassadors, countries sent us, we cannot finish them in one hour. It will take us a day. So I really thank them one, one, one for their uh, good friendship very humanitarian response in a very short time. But I just wanted to briefly inform you about what have we have done in the foreign ministry. Uh, then I will just leave the floor to our guests. Uh, you know, it, the area affected was about 100,000 square kilometers, and it affected 13 million people. Uh, of course, Turkey was known as the most generous country before of, uh, because we one of the three countries delivering the biggest amount of development aid per its national income in the world. But this time we really needed help because the disaster was enormous. So, and uh, the, the solidarity demonstrated after the earthquake is extraordinary and most sincere ranging from the poorest to the richest countries. There are countless emotional examples, such as Afghan brothers and sisters sending their jewelry items, 
a Turkmen woman who wanted to donate her only asset, a cattle, children selling tea in the streets of Sarajevo for donations, a kid collecting returnable bottles with his bicycle in the Nether Netherlands, a Rohingyan woman donating her savings for dark days, Muslim Christian woman knitting gloves and scarves for the earthquake affected people. It was a highly emotional process and we would like to learn from, of course, our distinguished guests today, their emotions, experiences, and observations. Uh, just some brief statistics for your information. More than 70 million US dollars have been collected as donations by our Turkey, uh, uh, missions abroad. More than 303 million US dollars pledged by states and more than 206 million US dollars pledged by non-governmental organizations. As I told you, around 12,400 search and rescue teams and also some health professionals came to our rescue. There were 34 field hospitals uh, and two of them are still active from United Arab Emirates and Germany. 470,000 tents and uh, 2,000 tents only from United Arab Emirates. 50,000 tents donated by Pakistan. And there are about uh, eight and or around 9,000 container houses donated, about two and a half million blankets, 40,000 electrical power units, and more than 170,000 heaters. Just briefly, because the aid is still coming in, and it's enormous. So I just wanted to give the floor to our guests one by one, just for their brief opening remarks, then we, we can have some issues and I, I could have some questions for them to talk about. Ambassador Suzuki, so it's... Well, please. thank you very much uh, for this opportunity to express my uh, uh, views about this earthquake. And, and uh, first of all, I also would like to extend my word of uh, sincere condolences. Those people in disaster region who lost their loved ones, and also to Turkey as a country who has faced with this unprecedented challenge in the Republic's history. Well, I probably would just like to uh, first say about uh, how I felt about this uh, earthquake initially when I heard this uh, event. Actually, it was, uh, for me, it was a kind of a personal event because uh, uh, coincidentally, uh, as a government of Japan, on the day of uh, February 6th, that when the earthquake was hit, we uh, sent our uh, field, field survey mission to uh, Hatai region for the purpose of uh, uh, uh, checking out cross-border operations. Uh, so from our embassy, seven people and uh, all the staffs, and also from the acting Japanese ambassador to Syria, and also his assistant. Nine people were staying at the museum hotels in Hatai. And then 417, this earthquake hit, so they were the victims of this earthquake. At five o'clock in the morning, I just received a phone call from them, and uh, they've been told, I've been told that uh, uh, one Turkish per personnel from our embassy was injured in his leg. One of our car, the uh, SUV, was crushed completely under the debris, but all the rest, they were, they were quite safe. So, uh, uh, so from the beginning of this earthquake, I really had uh, a very, very uh, personal, emotional experience. And then, uh, and, and then I probably would uh, dwelt a little bit longer when I asked the uh, further questions. But uh, from the beginning that I saw, this is a really huge earthquake. I've been reported by the people there 
the victims, the Japanese embassy's people, they have told me that it's a huge earthquake and a, a unprecedented. Even the Japanese people has never seen it, something like this. So from the beginning that we've been really mobilized and they have been having a good contact with the gov Japanese government. Maybe I will dwell it on the later. Thank you very much for your kind introduction. Thank you, Ambassador. Ambassador Matisse, please. Thank you so much, Ambassador. Uh, thank you. Um, and uh, I also would like to thank the Leite Shimbash Kanli to uh, be invited to this uh, very important and meaningful uh, program. I would like to tell you that on Monday I uh, gave a presentation in Istanbul uh, for the Istanbul Security Conference on disaster diplomacy. And I was criticized to talk about disaster diplomacy. Uh, and I explained that I believe that there are two parts of disaster diplomacy and Hungary is very clearly in one part of that. That is, you have good relations and when disaster strikes, then you show solidarity and you show uh, support. Especially because this earthquake uh, affected a bigger area in Turkey than the area of Hungary itself. Our country is 97,000 square kilometers and this was around 115,000 square kilometers. Uh, the population of Hungary is just under 10 million uh, and more than 10 million people were affected in Turkey. So uh, this is for us uh, somehow a little bit difficult to imagine. <clears throat> also because Hungary knows nothing about earthquakes. The biggest earthquake uh, in my life in Hungary was in 1986 and don't laugh please Mr. Ambassador, it was 3.6. So we absolutely have no idea about what an earthquake is. <clears throat> but I have to tell you that our special search and rescue teams are extremely good. They are very, very successful. Some of them well known in, uh, uh, in Turkey as well. Uh, I, I personally witnessed that uh, two of the more senior, I don't want to say old, but the more senior, the more experienced search and rescue guys were recognized in Hatay uh, that they were in 1999 in Kojeli and in 1998 in Adana. So there were Turkish search and rescue personnel and somebody came to one of our guys and said, I know you. And the Hungarian said, oh no, no, he was afraid, you know, a lot of emotions, maybe there will be a conflict. Oh no, you don't know me, I'm, I'm from Hungary, I've never been in Hatay. He said, no, I know you, I know you from Kojeli. You were there and you saved the four-year-old child. And then the guy said, yes. And the same Hungarian search and rescue person saved after 120 hours a five years old child as well. So these are fantastic stories, very strong uh, stories. Even with the ambassadors, we, we talked about that we have just inaugurated a statue for a search and rescue dog in Kojeli, uh, who saved uh, this, this, this child in 1999. And this is a very important story because this connects directly the Turkish and the Hungarian people to a dog. It's not state relations. I'm responsible mostly for state relations. Uh, but this is directly between the people. The people of Kojeli knew this story. It was at that time in 1999 and 2000, very well known. And now there, there are new stories, a lot of stories that give us hope. And I intentionally use the word hope because just yesterday, a Hungarian search and rescue dog called Hope was decorated by the president of the Republic of Turkey. A search and rescue dog called Hope was decorated. And this is again such a, such a touching story. This is, this is uh, something extremely uh, strong. But I, I took a lot of time for the, for the, for the long wing, but maybe two more sentences. Uh, so I woke up uh, at 5.30 in that morning because my elder child has kicked me in the kidneys uh, and kicked me out of the bed, uh, practically. Uh, and this was the moment when I saw the, the news that something big happened. Of course, I saw a number, how strong that earthquake was, and I just understood it strong but I did not know how, how devastating uh, that is. And uh, very quickly, I had the chance to talk with the uh, Deputy Director General of the Hungarian AFAD, uh, because he was in Ankara uh, in December on an organization of Turkic states meeting uh, about uh, uh, disaster management. So this was a very important contact, uh, and we could see decision-making that all uh, search and rescue teams uh, could uh, come. So uh, even though we are a small country with limited economic possibilities, we have good experience in uh, uh, search and rescue uh, operations, uh, and it was really, really interesting to, to see 
uh, and it made me very proud how the Hungarian state and the NGOs have uh, reacted in this question. Maybe later we can talk about that as well. Thank you, Ambassador. Ambassador Lazaris. Uh, thank you, Ambassador, for uh, place had been totally devastated. Uh, the first reports we got were that, listen, this is, has nothing to do with who, what we have so far experienced. So uh, we sent the first team on the uh, first day. On the third day, there was a second team, and by uh, that time also uh, volunteer teams were getting activated and coming in. Um, we said, uh, as we saw that the needs, especially in uh, medicinals, was very high, we set an air bridge uh, uh, on the 8th, and 9th, and 10th of February. A uh, uh, number of airplanes were uh, detailed to unload medicinals at Adana. Uh, the first consignment was accompanied by our Minister of uh, uh, natural disasters relief, uh, Mr. Stylianidis. Uh, 36 hours later, uh, Foreign Minister Lendias was there meeting with uh, his counterpart, Mr. Chaushulu, and that set the whole thing uh, on a different uh, level, which was quite uh, good because uh, at some point we had about three to four convoys, truck convoys crossing the border. Uh, on the Ebers River, and we also had ships delivering uh, voluminous material uh, at, uh, mainly at Adana, but also later at uh, uh, Iskenderun. So it was a big effort on, on our part. Uh, the um, teams sent uh, uh, by the, the uh, Greek state, by the uh, Ministry of, Na of uh, Relief from Natural Disasters were about 50 uh, persons, all specialized. Uh, our teams are specialized in actually um, uh, working in um, very uh, uh, at the limit of what, what is uh, of uh, the situations uh, on the ground. I mean. It's per, uh, people going into holes in the ground and trying to get out people by hand. Where they go where the machines don't go. Uh, so uh, they, had, they were quite successful. They got uh, five people uh, out alive. Unfortunately, many more who were dead at the time they, we managed to arrive. Uh, I th I'm afraid this is uh, a tale common to all the rescue teams, to both Turkish and for, foreign, that uh, were active there. Uh, more people were saved by our uh, by the volunteer teams. Uh, in total, we had uh, we had a huge uh, uh, number of well, mainly as I said, uh, medical equipment, medical uh, drugs. And uh, uh, the second stage, tents and blankets, sent in plus other, uh, other material that was either came out of, the, of our uh, emergency uh, warehouses, public property, or that had been donated by uh, Greek citizens. Uh, at some point, I was talking to my friend, the, my counterpart in Athens, Chartai AGS. And he said, listen, I went to uh, the Piraeus Stadium, which is a huge uh, uh, extraction. I found it filled to the brim with packages and uh, uh, boxes and, and, and, and Frank told me, frankly, I don't know how we're going to manage these kind of uh, quantities. Uh, so it was... Uh, we uh, are quite satisfied with how it worked on our side. I mean, uh, our protocols worked, they worked well. Uh, we brought, we believe that we brought some real help, although of course uh, the scale of the disaster dwarfed anything that anybody could throw at it. Uh, one uh, thing that was uh, remarkable because, of course, 
everybody knows that uh, recent Turkey has a bit like uh, Jack Lemon and uh, Walter Matthau, uh, was that there was an upswell of support for from the Greek people, those are Turkish neighbors. Uh, uh, people don't realize it, but very often because we're used to all the kind of uh, news, but in reality, the people-to-people -people interface between our two nations is, uh, uh, well, uh, many friendly ca uh, uh, can countries that are friends between themselves would envy it. So in that respect, we were forcing op an already open door. So there was uh, the um, main challenge was to canalize what was coming in rather than telling people to please help. It was not that. People came to help already when they opened their TVs and saw what had happened. Donations started pouring in immediately. By noon already, uh, people were calling all everywhere asking where, where can I leave this or that or where can I put in uh, money? Uh, the, uh, the embassy, of course, was in the middle of the whole thing. We had to coordinate uh, the initial arrivals because, as I told you, infrastructure was being st still being set up because the um, uh, earthquake had uh, leveled also many of the structures that were necessary for disaster relief. relief. So we uh, uh, managed to send uh, buses and uh, trucks full of uh, perishables again, uh, uh, mainly gas and all that. But of course, the, uh, this was an infinite, infinitesimal part of the whole uh, effort on our part. The real uh, kudos must go to uh, the uh, our rescue teams, both state and uh, volunteer, and also to our uh, Turkish uh, partners with whom we had an excellent, co excellent cooperation and uh, uh, who, with whom we uh, shared uh, both the danger and, and the grief for the losses but also the uh, s uh, satisfaction for the successes we managed to, uh, to obtain together. Thank you, Ambassador. Thank you. Ambassador al -Dahari. Good morning, everybody. Uh, our condolences to the families who lost their beloved one and the uh, Turkish uh, Republic. Uh, first of all, uh, if you want to hear my experience, I think you're not going to find it in the news. So my experience, I was uh, at that day in the United Arab Emirates because we had a gathering of the ambassadors, all ambassadors. So we, we, we, we read the, the news, and then after that, I already contacted Ve the ambassador of Turkey there Türkiye in Abu Dhabi, and Abu Dhabi we opened an operation room in, uh, and uh, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. I joined that operation uh, room. We had instruction from the, our leadership, from the president, that in 12 hours, the rescue team has to reach in Turkey. So all the preparation of uh, rescue teams were prepared and at that same night of the earthquake, the first three planes arrived with, with the rescue teams. This is one thing. The other thing, we, because lives of, of, of people, they are very precious and very important to save. Uh, uh, instruction already came as quick as possible from the first hours. The second thing is uh, we, we did uh, moral support uh, uh, our president called the uh, uh, Excellency uh, Mr. President and the Minister of Foreign Affairs called the, uh, the Minister of Foreign Affairs supporting and uh, giving the solidarity to Turkey and this is one. Uh, at that time, I felt I had to cut my program anyway. So I had to cut the program anyway. I came back to Turkey. And I visited the area there. Uh, our minister came in uh, six days uh, of that earthquake because the uh, first three, four days, you know, it was a little bit closed. And uh, I've seen, uh, I think, uh, this is the biggest and largest earthquake I have uh, ever seen in my life. Of course, we don't have it in the way, but I've seen it in TV. But this one, I, I've seen it on uh, in real. Uh, for, for you, 
gördüm. Birleşik Arap Emirlikleri açısından insani anlamda dostlara, kardeşlerimize yardım etmek çok önemli. Ve bu anlamda son 15 yıldır bu anlamda oluşturduğumuz ilkelerimiz var. Bunlardan bir tanesi de dost ülkelere ihtiyaç durumunda yardımcı olmak. Ve biz bunu siyasetle bağlantılandırmıyoruz ya da başka herhangi bir konuyla bağlantılandırmıyoruz. İnsan bizim için önemli. İnsanlığa saygı duyuyoruz. İnsanlara saygı duyuyoruz. Ve bunu da sağladık. Ve bundan sonra da bütün malzemeler sağ hastanemize geldi. İki tane sağ hastanemiz var. Bir tanesi hala faaliyetine devam ediyor. Diğeri de Sağlık Bakanlığı'na devredildi bizim tarafımızdan. Ve bizim halkımızda bizim çalışanlarımıza bakacak olursak 84 tane personelimiz hala burada. Ramazan'ı burada geçirdiler. Bayramı burada geçirdiler. Çok şükür ki. Ve hala buradaki kardeşlerimizle destek halindeyiz. Bir diğer husus ise Türkiye will be i̇nşallah Türkiye bundan daha güçlü çıkacak hem kardeşleri hem de dostlarının desteğiyle tekrar iyileşik uh, bu afetten çıkacak ve benim Thank you very much. Thank you Ambassador. Yeah. The, uh, I cannot make any comparison of course but uh, uh, since day one I Uh, at the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Turkey, and I can just shortly say that uh, the response uh, from uh, United Arab Emirates is remarkable. It's really, really uh, very large, and we really appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, yeah, the, of course, the, nobody can be ready for th this kind of disasters. And we, we know that, of course, Turkey is uh, an earthquake country. There are certain uh, I mean, areas which are very risky. But we, nobody expected a, a big, uh, I mean, uh, uh, earthquake at this scale. So it was kind of uh, really a surprise for most of the Turkish people as well. But uh, as I uh, said in the beginning, uh, both inside uh, with domestic resources and outside help uh, we we did very well in my personal opinion to uh, uh, to how to respond uh, in responding this uh, disaster but of course there are certain things that we should uh, i mean take uh, uh, some lessons or learn from certain uh, issues that if god forbid uh, so i was i uh, I just uh, want to ask my guests here whether there are uh, certain things that they, sh they can give us as an advice uh, to be better prepared for the uh, next, uh, if happens, God forbid, the disaster. So let me again start with you, Ambassador Suzuki, please. Well, is it all yes. oh. <coughs> Well, I, for, for my experience, the, you see, Turkey is an earthquake-prone country, and then so was Japan. We both uh, uh, live on the fault lines, and then earthquake will never leave us. Maybe, you know, this is the really the big earthquake we had the, you know, for the uh, last 100 years, but maybe we will have it on the next 10 years or 20 years, 30 years' time. We had a very big earthquake in Hanshin Awaji, which killed 6,500 people in 1995,000 5, people in 2011. So the earthquakes happens. So we really have to uh, prepare, and we have to uh, improve our systems and the mechanism. That is very, very important thing. For example, when we had the first earthquake in uh, Hanshin Awaji, uh, I think our, the, all those uh, building standards and et cetera was not really uh, uh, earthquake prone. So uh, there's a lot of, lots of uh, damaging of buildings and et cetera. It's very important to implement all those standards and rules which is actually on the paper. 
and then how to implement is a very, very important factor. So that's what we did. But again, in the 2011, the huge earthquake, it was magnitude nine outside of the coast of Tohoku uh, in the Pacific Ocean. And this time, I mean, that we, we are prepared for the earthquake. So there was not much death because of the earthquake, but tsunami came, huge tsunami came. And then of the 22,000 people that we lost, the lives, 90% of them are dead because of tsunami. Be why? Because we are not prepared for the tsunami at that time. We didn't expect that kind of unprecedented in human history, magnitude nine of the earthquake. We will never expect that would happen. So that's why 20, 20, 22,000 people were dead. So after this tsunami, we also improvise, we've also implemented large number of the regulations and rules. We asked the people to re relocate and then uh, move to the other highest uh, ground to build the houses. And then we also have uh, established uh, huge, uh, big, big high sea walls so that we can prevent the tsunamis to coming. Uh, and then those are the new rules that the Japanese government has implemented. And we also created a reconstruction agency. So the mechanism to create those mechanisms is a very, very important. And then I, I think uh, Turkey and Japan, because we are both earthquake countries, so we should learn each other together. One good example that I can give you now is that uh, uh, in order to implement all those rules and uh, et cetera, we really need to have uh, both countries experts, academics and experts to have a dialogue together. And then that is very important to share the experience and then how to, co you know, to discuss how to cope with it. Um, one really good de development between our two countries is that in the future, uh, in the near future, we are going to open Turkey, Japan Science and Technology University in Istanbul. And then we have already created uh, board members and the board of the council. And then uh, just like uh, last month, we have uh, uh, uh, formally decided to, uh, because of this earthquake, we, we front confronted that we include uh, earthquake and the disaster prevention as a one major pillar of this new university. So mechanism like that, I hope that will uh, contribute for the, you know, Turkey's policy making or regulation makings. Thank you. Thank you, Ambassador uh, Suzuki. Yeah, everybody in Turkey is aware that Japan is uh, also an earthquake country, but also very well prepared for earthquakes. So we, we know that we should uh, learn from you. And I know that you've been very active in uh, your response. And also some, I think, JICA teams have been here. And uh, there is a uh, cooperation going on between the relevant agencies. And uh, I agree with you, we should work on the, uh, this cooperation and uh, we should, I mean, uh, make it further. And uh, of course, uh, world becomes very small when this kind of disaster happens. And even from the farther, farthest countries, uh, response and aid is still coming, still arriving. And we really appreciate the international uh, community's uh, uh, coordination in helping us. Uh, also, uh, uh, Ambassador Matthias, you can also, you may have some advices for us or recommendations. Thank you, Thank you very much. Uh, I think advice is maybe a little bit uh, of a strong word uh, <laughs> in case of a country that uh, hardly ever has any earthquakes. Uh, but what is uh, very important to be able to respond properly is just as Ambassador uh, said that uh, you have to be prepared. You have to make your preparations. Uh, what we have realized somewhere in 2021 is that uh, the Turkish-Hungarian uh, uh, disaster management uh, uh, agreement is pretty much outdated. Uh, so we started to work on a uh, little bit repairing that. And uh, in the end of 2021, we realized it's not enough to, to, to just, just repair that. We have to make a completely new agreement. So we worked on that uh, hard, but we did not think that it is uh, so urgent uh, to, to do it. Uh, as of uh, yesterday, it is ready for signature. 
So we are going to uh, make an international agreement between Turkey and Hungary to uh, how to cooperate on uh, uh, disaster uh, management. But as we are ready, the professionals know the content, they actually will start the cooperation even earlier before it uh, becomes mm -hmm. a law. Uh, so this is very important. And also, <clears throat> I've already mentioned that in December there was this uh, ministerial level organization of Turkish states uh, meeting. And there were very, very important uh, uh, initiatives, by, mainly by AFAD. Uh, uh, that uh, uh, these countries are uh, going to uh, uh, put together a common uh, response center or response mechanism. This is actually very uh, important for the future, not only talking about earthquakes, but other disasters. So you have to be prepared, you have to make your bilateral and multilateral contacts as well. Uh, I believe that this is very important. <clears throat> and maybe another thing is how to, how to uh, uh, tell to the next generation or the decision makers after us uh, is to share our experiences, how you did that and uh, what, what you did, what was good, what was wrong. Because uh, even we as ambassadors made some wrong decisions. We could have been probably more effective uh, in some questions. We could have done things more right. Uh, so communication uh, is one very important uh, topic about that and especially if we are here in this building, uh, we have to mention that as well. Uh, how is the communication that uh, a foreign country's representative does. You don't say anything, or do you say too much, uh, or, or what, what, what is the main message of your country or your country's representation uh, towards the locals, towards the local decision makers, and mostly towards the local people. Uh, and uh, uh, we, we try to make a really uh, active communication uh, in, in the times uh, of, of the earthquakes and uh, I myself made uh, some moral mistakes as well. I have uh, published videos where uh, while people were taken out of the rubble you could see their faces and in normal circumstances this is wrong. Uh, and I stopped there for a second and I thought about it, is that a good thing to do? And I, I decided to do it because people at that time needed, and once again my keyword is hope, hope that their uh, friends, their relatives can come out from their life. Uh, they needed hope that, uh, that it's, it's not done. Still after three days, still after five days, still after one week, somebody can come out alive. But communication is very important. Do you do this uh, in an active way or, or, or uh, a little bit more passive and you let the local media to, to, to uh, do what they have to do? Uh, in a country. So, uh, actually this is also a very interesting uh, topic that could be picked up uh, internationally, how you, how you uh, run that, uh, and I believe we all could learn a lot from it. Thank you, Ambassador. Uh, Ambassador Lazaris, uh, you yes, have it. Thank you. Well, as uh, Victor said, uh, advice is a strong word, especially uh, from uh, non-specialists. Uh, but uh, one thing that uh, struck me was this. Uh, there is a common fallacy about which kind of building is more re uh, resistant to earthquake. Uh, uh, usually people think that older buildings are more resistant because uh, modern uh, buildings are made of lighter materials and for, for in the popular mind these are more frail. In fact, what our team reported from their work in uh, Hatay was that the new construction proved more resilient. Mm. Uh, the uh, buildings that were uh, built in the 60s, 70s, 80s uh, w uh, were uh, in the majority of those that fell with catastrophic uh, results, meaning killed the people who were inside. Uh, what is the um, difference between the two? Well, I think that the difference was that from the 90s onwards, new building regulations were um, introduced. So the obvious conclusion that I can offer, excuse me from a total Philistine in this field, but uh, it just jumps on your, your eyes, is that uh, building, building uh, regulations should incorporate regularly the lessons learned from such unfortunate events. We, we cannot be satisfied with uh, regulations that have been um, adopted in 2010 and then in 2015 something happens 
and we wait for the, for the next five years to uh, update uh, the regulation. So this is important. As for sharing uh, information, as previous speakers have already uh, uh, mentioned, uh, I think that this is already done by the um, uh, scientific community. Uh, international conferences, uh, conclusions are presented there. Uh, the question, but of course uh, I'm, I'm not a specialist, as I said, is whether all these conclusions and all these uh, scientific uh, reports are being incorporated into actual um, legislation and uh, uh, practice uh, by the uh, uh, relevant re uh, agencies. So uh, this is what I can contribute from a totally worm's eye view. But uh, uh, as I said, it was quite impressive that the difference between pre-building uh, pre, uh, building regulations uh, material and post-building uh, reg uh, regulation materials was really, of construction was really um, striking. So we can only work, uh, say we keep up the good work and let's update as often as possible. Thank you, Ambassador. Ambassador Adari. Thank you very much. I think you finished all the ideas, but I have one more idea here. Mm -hmm. uh, I think because if you go back to the cause, earthquake, earthquake, is, earthquake is, is, is everywhere in this area. So I think if we go back to the cause of earthquake, it sometimes is a bad of bad contracting and bad uh, engineering. So my idea is, and uh, my suggestion is, to have uh, a cut a place, or we call it a earthquake city, from the, the ripples itself now, and then uh, each engineer from universities and each contractors has to visit this uh, earthquake city and then see by their eyes what bad contractings and bad engineering did to people. Yeah. And, and I think this will continue because, you know, we are human people. We forget after five years, six years. So we, if we think about the next generation, I think we have uh, to leave a, a trace back for, for, for them to see what happened exactly and in life. So I think... Uh, kind of, of, of a city, earthquake city, or kind of a museum, especially for those people who study engineering and study contracting. Thank you very much. Thank you, ambassadors. I think we still have a few minutes. Uh, I just wanted to uh, thank you for uh, all the response and help still being coming uh, from, uh, all, from your countries and from all over the world. And uh, as I mentioned, uh, that international cooperation was almost uh, the, uh, the half of what we could do to respond to this uh, disaster. Almost half of the uh, tents were brought uh, from uh, foreign countries, from abroad. Containers are still coming also being produced in Turkey, but almost half of them are from outside Turkey. So the international cooperation and the international readiness is very important. And I also appreciate uh, your contribution to this campaign called uh, We Stand With You, Turkey, uh, from your people. And I please uh, send our best regards to your people uh, from Turkey, uh, from Turkish people, because we uh, we discovered, we knew before, but we realized once more that we have a lot of friends in the world, our uh, uh, closest neighbors, even the farthest uh, countries, helped us uh, without thinking of the cost and uh, the effort. So we really appreciate that. And thank you very much for being here today, Ambassadors. Thank you. Um, 
Before concluding, uh, I just uh, learned that Ambassador Suzuki is going to be leaving Tur Turkey soon. We are sorry for that, for losing him, but we wish him the be all the best in his new assignment, I think in Australia. Uh, but before uh, leaving Turkey, we just want to present him a small token to remember us by. Thank you. Evet, tüm...